A very funny thing happens when you mention the words flat earth. Usually it's met with a lot of anger. An insane level of anger. People feel the need to call you an idiot, call it a hoax or a psyops, call you stupid, tell you that you should die and not have children. But why does this happen? Why is it that thinking outside the box and having your own opinions is met with so much anger. This definitely doesn't happen in debates about Coke or Pepsi. The fact is we live in a system where it's divide and conquer. Give the people different things to fight over. And it's the same thing, but it's got a different name. If you're different, if you have a different opinion from the norm, it's frowned upon. And immediately what happens with Flat Earth is it's called a psyops. And everyone's screaming, shill, you're a shill, he's a shill. But I really don't care about who's a shill. I mean, it's the same thing with the 9-11 trade centers. Anybody who's looked into conspiracy theories enough will see a reoccurring theme. And that theme is that the people on top who run the show are Satan worshippers. It becomes very evident and they do things to keep everyone else in fear and afraid. So, and I'm not saying that people didn't die during 9-11, we know that. We know that people died, but we know that it wasn't some terrorist from a cave somewhere with a box cutter that did it. Our government did it. And it's the same with Sandy Hook and San Bernardino. I don't know if people died or not, but you can look into it and find so many discrepancies that it doesn't add up. And that's the story with Flat Earth and what Flat Earthers are saying. And there are different models. No one is saying that if you get to a point, you're going to fall off the edge of the Earth. I mean, there might be a model out there where someone believes that, but for the most point, we're saying there's some sort of barrier or it's an infinite plane, but it's not round. And the more you look into Flat Earth and actually give it the time of day instead of getting angry and ranting about the stupidity of people, you start to realize that stuff really doesn't add up, just like other things, like 9-11 and Sandy Hook. You start feeling like you're in some sort of twilight zone or you're wandering around and everyone is some sort of sheep and then there are the people who you know they just they just ignore it and, and they hope it'll go away but flat earth isn't going away because flat earth exposes the lies that we're being told and it gets people questioning what is really going on. And there's nothing wrong with questioning. 
There's absolutely nothing wrong with seeking for yourself. And that's what Flat Earth does. You've got people who are now purchasing telescopes to actually see what the stars look like. You have people who buy weather balloons and cameras and send them up to see for themselves what's up there. And we're continuing to find that the story NASA and mainstream media has told us for generations about the world we live in doesn't make sense. Every picture we have of Earth is fake. And all that we want you to do as Flat Earthers is to investigate for yourselves. Right. <laughs> Who is this really? <laughs> What's going on? How come you want me to do all these weird things? Just go and, and start digging. All of it is fake. And they'll tell you, well, it's all composites that we had to stitch together because, you know, the Earth is so big. Well, why don't you just fly out far enough to get a good picture of it? Why does it all have to be an artist rendering or a composite? Why don't we have any real pictures? And you see pictures where the continents don't even match. And, you know, other stories they'll tell you as well, there's all that space junk out there, so we just have to clean it up and make it pretty. Well, why don't I have a picture of that then? Why don't you show me what all the satellites look like? You know, and, and you've got some people who are saying, well, you know, it's an oblate spheroid. It's sort of pear-shaped. And you're like, well, how come I don't have pictures of a pear-shaped earth then? And people will immediately talk about, well, we've got, you know, meteors and stuff, and where do those come from? Without actually connecting some of the other dots. Yeah, stuff falls down from time to time. But if there's really all those meteors out there like they say there are, how come they don't hit all the satellites all the time? They do say that the ISS is constantly being pelted with micrometeors. How come the astronauts are never killed? Or the ISS is never really knocked off course and sent plummeting to Earth? They are spinning a web of lies and it's getting harder and harder to hold up. And people love to point to gravity, but there is actually nothing that proves gravity. And we had uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson drop a microphone on stage, but what did that prove? What did that prove? Can you show me a spinning ball that holds water to it? Can you do an experiment where you can show that? You can't. Because it's impossible. I'm supposed to believe that gravity is such a strong force that it holds everything down, including the water, and it keeps the moon in our orbit and we can only see one side of the moon at any time, but we're spinning, and, and our moon is spinning around us, but it's not spinning itself. And we're spinning around the sun, and then the entire solar system is spinning around the galactic center. I mean, does, does gravity just get to pick and choose? what it attracts and how it attracts it? Why doesn't the moon spin itself? How come, you know, I don't 
have my own gravity where little objects spin around me. Why doesn't the moon just crash into Earth or the Earth just crash into the sun? And then they came out with this whole announcement about how they found gravity and everyone was so excited and so happy and then during the announcement they showed a CGI of black holes spinning around each other as if that was that was it that's how we did it and they showed this little CGI why why don't we have any real pictures of black holes and they're like well because they're black we can't take pictures of them um, then how do you know they exist if you can't photograph it? Why would you trust anything if the only evidence of it is a CGI image or video? That's not real evidence. It's not. And then, you know, we had people like Nikola Tesla, who did amazing real science that actually benefited mankind. What has Einstein done for us but give us a bunch of jumbled up fancy math? Einstein was a fraud. He was a complete fraud. The universe and the world around us is electric. And if we look at more of, of the silliness, we have things like the Hubble telescope, which shows us all of these beautiful galaxies so far from us and all of the stars and beautiful gas clouds and it's all HD and and beautiful and then we point the Hubble at Pluto and what did we get? Why did we have to wait for New Horizons to get to Pluto before we got a picture of it? Is Hubble farsighted guys? Like, does that make any sense to you that we can get these beautiful images of all these beautiful stars billions of light years away, but we had to wait years before a satellite supposedly passed Pluto, passed all of that debris and asteroids near Jupiter, and navigated through the void of space before we got this beautiful CGI image of Pluto and you can obviously see that the cartoon is is right on it they're messing with us guys they're messing with us why is it that we don't see any pictures of stars around Earth it's because amateur astronomers would figure that out in a heartbeat. They can't fake that kind of stuff, but they can show you stars billions of light years away because how would you know? Hubble's not public access. And if they put out a picture of Earth and you could see like the Big Dipper in the back background and Orion, like people would figure that out. Now, I don't deny that there's something up there, the ISS, but I don't believe people are living on it. I don't think it it's a space station at all. For all I know, it could be just a weather balloon that's dressed up to look like a space station. Because how is it that we can get signals from all the way out by Pluto, but the space station goes on to the dark side of the planet and we lose signal. How do we have all those satellites up there, supposedly, 
and we lose signal. You know, I can't even get signal on my phone in parts of my house. The evidence of God is really all around us. And I always find it really fascinating when I see comments and, and people calling other people stupid for believing in God. When did we get to this point where believing in God was stupid? I used to be an atheist myself. And I started waking up, especially in college. I've, I've had my experiences where I saw things that really opened my eyes and I had experiences. And one of the things that I just found the most amazing was taking a microbiology course and learning about how the uh, flagella tail works and I kept looking at this thing and I was like this is like a mini motor this is way too complicated to have just been random evolution but that's what they want you to believe the evidence of God is all around us and it is so beautiful even right down to something as simple as the honeybee you know how does it, it's too big for its wings, and yet it flies. There is so much around us that we can't make sense of. And I think therein lies the beauty of it, of this world. And people say all the time, well, what's the point of Flat Earth? You know, why would they lie? Why would they hide, uh, hide this? Why is it not a psyops? It's because they are hiding God from you. And as I said, anyone who's looked into conspiracies enough knows that they worship Satan in the way that they build buildings and the layout of, say, Capitol Hill. It's all hidden in plain sight. Start with the eye on the back of the dollar, if you want to find out. They are hiding God from you, and they worship Satan behind your back. And I think part of the beauty in this world is that we are waking up. Maybe this, this whole thing where we are living is to, to realize the deception and the beauty of it, and that it is all a lie. And that God created this beautiful place for us, and that we are indeed special. And I don't understand why that very thought can make people so angry when they hear about Flat Earth, is that you were created to experience all of this and you are very special and part of being here is to realize that